Magandang umaga po sa lahat ng criminology students sa lahat ng nagre-review for the upcoming criminology licensure examination under the new curriculum. Pati na sa ating mga criminology instructors at criminology enthusiasts sa Luzon, sa Visayas at sa Mindanao. Welcome po sa discussion natin today. Ang discussion po natin will focus in one of the subjects under criminal sociology. Ang tinatawag po nating juvenile delinquency and juvenile justice system. Sa mga nagre-review ngayon, I will give more emphasis on the topics that came out in the criminology licensure examination in the past. So, bigyan po natin ng pansin or emphasis yung mga terms or information na lumabas sa nakaraang board examination. So, I hope, cadets, that you will bear with me. Ang discussion po natin is medyo matagalan kasi we need to discuss the topics completely prehensively. Hindi naman po pwedeng gawin nating 20 minutes lang kasi pag 20 minutes lang, ang mangyayari dyan, medyo yung uh, discussion might not be that exhaustive. So, kailanganin, we need to be comprehensive in our discussion. So, yan po ang reason kaya ang discussion natin ay posibleng aabot ng 40 even more than one hour. So I hope you will bear with me. Now, without further ado, let us understand the definition of juvenile delinquency. Ang ibig po sabihin ng juvenile delinquency, this refers to the antisocial acts or behaviors committed by minors which are contrary to the norms of the society. It involves oftentimes misdemeanor, but may include also offenses and felonies. So, ang ibig sabihin po ng juvenile delinquency, ito po yung tinatawag nating mga behavior or mga antisocial acts committed by those individuals who are classified as minors. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng minors? Ang minors po ay yung mga Kabataan whose age is below 18. So, ibig sabihin ng below 18, if you are aging 17 years old or 16 years old or 15 years old, you are considered as a minor. Pag nakapatong na po yung edad ng isang tao into 18, hindi na po siya matatawag nating minor. Kasi yung minor again will be from 17 years old and below. Okay? 17 years old and below. Now, ang mga antisocial acts or behaviors na ito are contrary. When you say contrary po, against the norms of the society. Ang tanong, ano bang ibig sabihin ng norms? Ang norms are those classified as standard of the society. Okay? Yung standard of behavior in the society. For example, yung pagsasabi natin na good morning, good afternoon, good evening is a standard of the society. Now, that refers to what we call as the norm. Now, ang juvenile delinquency may involve misdemeanor, offenses, or felonies. Now, in introduction to criminology, Okay, in introduction to criminology, na-discuss po ang difference ng misdemeanor, offenses, and felonies. Now, ang tatlong terms, dapat yung tandaan, cadets, cadets especially yung nagre-review right now, ang tatlong terms na po ito are different from each other. When we say misdemeanor, this refers to acts, or omissions that are punishable by an ordinance. Ano ba yung ordinance? Yung yung law or regulation passed by municipal, provincial, or, or any local government units. Ang offenses naman, ito po yung acts 
or omissions punishable by the special law. Special law po. Ano ba yung mga special law? Yung Republic Acts, Presidential Decrees. Yun po ang mga special law. Ang felonies, on the other hand, refers to acts or omissions that are punishable by the revised penal code. So ano po ang pagkaiba ng misdemeanor? Offenses at felonies. Misdemeanor violates the ordinance. Offenses violates the, re the, the, the special laws. Felonies violates what we call as the revised penal code. Number two, dapat po nating tandaan that in Republic Act 9344, we will discuss that later on, in RA 9344, ang tawag po sa juvenile delinquent, okay, yung tao na nag-commit ng antisocial act, ang tawag po sa juvenile delinquent is CICL po. Ano po ba ang pinagkaiba ng krimen at yung juvenile delinquency? As I have stated a while ago, yung juvenile delinquency po is committed by minors, yung 17 years old and below. Yung crime naman is committed by individuals who are considered as adult. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng adult? Pag nakapatong na po again, On 18 years old, yung edad ng isang tao, automatically, that person shall be classified as an adult. Pangalawa, yung crime breaks the criminal code which is created by the society through a written law. While yung juvenile delinquency merely breaks the cultural law or norms. Sa crime, mayroon po tayong mga batas, republic acts, presidential decrees, ordinances. Written po ito. Okay? The revised penal code are written laws of the land. So, ang crime po is a violation of these laws. But in juvenile delinquency, wala pong written na batas. Okay? Hindi po ito violation sa written na batas. Ang violation po sa juvenile delinquency will be merely in the norms. So, so, ang norms po, as I have mentioned a while ago, refers to the standards of the society. Yung criteria po natin. Yung what is considered to be normal. For example, ano po ba ang normal? Pag binigyan ka ng errand. ng magulang mo. Pagsabihan ka ng magulang mo na mag ka ng tubig. Ano po ba ang normal response? Ang normal response will be to, to, to heed on the errand. To respond on the request in a polite manner. So if a person once given an errand by his parent and he will raise his tone of his voice Raising the tone of your voice against your parent is not normal. So basically, when you raise your voice against your parent, that is already a violation of the norms of the society. But it does not mean that raising your voice, you committed a crime. Okay? It does not mean that once you raise your voice, you already committed a crime. Because raising your voice against your parent is not a crime. But it is just a violation of what is considered as normal or what is considered as the norm. Pangatlo, ang crime po, a person who committed a crime can be dealt with accordance with the criminal justice system. ba? Diba? May limang pillars po tayo. Review tayo sa CGS. May lima po tayong pillars. Una, law enforcement. Pangalawa, prosecution. Pangatlo, court. Pangapat, Correction. Panglima yung community. Yun po ang five pillars of the CJS. Pag ang tao is nakakumit ng crime. Pero, pag ang tao is a juvenile delinquent, classified siya na CICL or child in conflict with the law, he will be dealt through what we call as the juvenile justice system. Yan po ang pagkakaiba between juvenile delinquency at saka yung crime. Now, punta naman tayo sa historical background ng juvenile delinquency. Cadets, yung nagre-review right now, lumabas po ito sa previous board exam, yung tinatawag nating Lex Talionis. Ano ba yung sabihin ng Lex Talionis? Ibig sabihin nito, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Ito po ang 
principle that is embedded on the Code of Hammurabi. Yung Code of Hammurabi po natin is known as the oldest known code. Okay? So, wag nyo pong kalimutan, Lex Talionis. Pag nag-mention ng Lex Talionis, that refers to the principle of the Code of Hammurabi, which means an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Now, in 1641 po, may tinatawag tayong stubborn child law. Ano ba yung stubborn child law? Ang stubborn child law is passed by the General Court of Massachusetts. Ang sa batas po na ito, nagsasabi po na children who disobey their parents could be put to death. So, Maybe if you are asked for an errand, magigib ka ng tubig, magsaing ka, and you will disobey your parent. Nako, in the stubborn child law passed by the Massachusetts, children who, who disobey, who will disobey, their parents can be put to death. So, wag nyo po kalimutan, stubborn child law. Now, may tinatawag din tayong Roman law and canon or the church law. Approximately 2,000 years ago made distinction between juveniles and adults based on the notion of age of responsibility. So ang batas po na ito differentiated on the punishment between adults at saka yung tinatawag natin na tinatawag natin na juveniles or minors. Now, in addition, Mayroon din tayong ancient Jewish law. Ano ba tong ancient Jewish law? The Talmud specified condition under which immaturity was to be considered in imposing punishment. There was no corporal punishment prior to puberty. Okay? Which was considered to be the age of 12 for females and 13, 13 for males. In addition, no capital punishment is to be imposed on those offenders under 20 years of age. So, dapat po nating uh, i-remember na ang ancient Jewish law, okay? Ang ancient Jewish law, hindi po siya nagbibigay ng corporal punishment po prior to puberty. Ano ba yung puberty according to, the, to this law? Ang puberty po, will be on the age of 12 para sa mga babae, tsaka 13 naman para sa mga males. Granting na wala pong capital punishment to be imposed on those offenders under 21 years of age. So yan po ang pagkakaiba ng ancient Jewish law, yung Code of Hammurabi, tsaka yung stubborn child law ng Massachusetts. Now, sa Rome naman, may tinatawag tayong codification of Roman law. Ito po ang uh, isa na, na batas na nagre-resulta sa si tinatawag nating 12 tables. Now, kung sa atin sa Republic Act 9344 po, yung juvenile delinquent will, be, will have to be dealt by the juvenile justice system. Ang sa codification of Roman law, wala pong pagkaiba. Yung justice system ng adults will be the same justice system for juveniles. Ito po ang codification of Roman law. Pero, sa codification po na ito, yung mga bata na tinatawag na infants or proximus infante, pag ang edad po is 7 years old below, okay? pag 7 years old below po, you will not be held criminally responsible. So, ibig sabihin po, exempted ka sa punishment pag 7 years old and below pero pag above 7 ka na to 14 7 to 14 ha for the boys tsaka 7 to 12 for the girls ang liability po will have to be based on the capacity of that juvenile to understand the difference between right and wrong. Ang tawag po natin dito sa Republic Act 9344, ito po yung tinatawag nating discernment. ba? Yung discernment po. So, sa codification of the Roman law, similar po ito. 
Yung 7 to 14 for the boys, 7 to 12 for the girls, the punishment will have to be dependent on what we call as discernment. Your capacity to understand or to distinguish between right and wrong. Tsaka yung kung tingnan naman natin yung Anglo-Saxon common law, Okay, yung Anglo-Saxon common law or the law based on custom or usage, similar din ang implication. Kasi dito sa Anglo-Saxon common law, yung mga bata, yung children under the age of seven were presumed incapable of forming criminal intent. So, pari-pariho po sa codification of Roman law. Pag 7 years old, albilo ka po, meaning there is no criminal intent because you are incapable, basically, thereof. Pero pag 7 to 14 na, again, pag 7 to 14 na, yung punishment, yung criminal sanction pa rin will have to be based on the demonstration of the minor in doing the criminal intent. So, ibig sabihin, discernment pa rin. So, ang punishment will have to be based on the discernment. So, if you if you exhibit discernment in the commission of the crime, so basically, you have to be dealt with and you have to be punished. But if you are 7 or 8 years old and you acted without discernment, so basically, you will be exempted. Yan po ang pinagkaiba ng codification of Roman law at yung Anglo-Saxon common law. These two have similarities po. Now, pagdating po ng middle of 19th century, dito na po nagsimula ang tinatawag nating parents patre. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng parents patre? Usually, in our uh, introduction to criminology, uh, ma, ma, ma remember natin ng, uh, ng parents patre would refer to the parents of the state. Yan po ang translation dyan. It's a Latin word which means parents of the state. Pero ano ba ang nangyari? Bakit nabuo ang doctrine at tinatawag nating parents patre? Ang nangyayari po kasi sa middle of 19th century, nagsimula po yung mga organization or movements for the welfare, intended for the welfare of the children. Now, Ang organization po na tinatawag na Child Savers believed that children are born to be good. The only thing is that they become bad because of the bad environment that they are in. They become bad because of the circumstances that they underwent. So, ang Child Savers would, uh, would uh, be for the welfare. Okay, would be for the welfare of of the of the children. Kaya nangyari po na buo yung tinatawag nating parents pat parents patre. Why? Because this doctrine believe that the child born uh, the child which is born is not necessarily evil or bad. They only become bad because of the because of the circumstances. Now, secondly, ang parents patre would 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 uh, would mean that there should be no similarity or there should be no likeness in terms of the treatment between adults and juvenile delinquents because the juveniles or yung minors po, if they committed a crime, they should not be classified as criminals, but rather they are just victims of victims of the bad environment or victims of improper care or custody or treatment at home. Kaya yung parents patre or parents of the state, ang ibig sabihin dyan, yung government po natin has the responsibility to overlook, okay, to oversee the welfare of the children. Now, in the Law Act of 1601, okay, in the Law Act of 1601, another progress had been made. So, if a child uh, was found to be living under the impoverished family, ano ba ibig sabihin ng impoverished? Pobre po. Okay? 
medyo kulang-kulang yung Uh, yung yung pagsupply ng daily needs. May tinatawag pong involuntary separation. Yung bata po is kunin sa impoverished family, sa impoverished parents, then the child will be placed on the local resident as apprentice. Yan po ang Law Act of 1601. So, huwag po natin kalimutan, parents patry po, ibig sabihin dyan, parents of the state. Now, punta naman tayo sa historical background na juvenile delinquency sa Philippine setting naman tayo. Sa Philippine setting, may tatlo po tayong batas na nakalagay sa slide. PD-603, yung PD-1179, tsaka yung RA-9344. But we'll be mentioning lot of laws later na po sa discussion natin. I'll just only, I just want only to highlight three muna, three Laws, okay? Yung 603-1179 tsaka yung 9344. Now, ang PD-603 po, lumabas po ito sa previous board examination. This refers to Child and Youth Welfare Code. Okay? Now, sa PD-603 po, ang definition po ng child, okay, or youthful offender would be those persons over 9 but under 21 years of age. Ang definition po again ng youthful offender would be those persons over 9 years old but under 21. Okay? So, when they committed a crime during that span of years, ang tawag po sa kanila is youthful offender. Now, ang provision po na ito, take note po mga kadete sa criminology, ang provision po na ito was amended. Ibig sabihin ng amended, it was changed by PD-1179. So ano bang na nangyari sa 1179? It defines a youthful offender as a child, minor, or youth including one who is emancipated in accordance with law who is over 9 years but under 18 years of age at the time of the commission of the offense. So, ano bang ibig sabihin? Sa PD-603, ang nangyari, 9 years old over but below 21. Pag nag-commit ng crime, tawag sa kanya, youthful offender. Pero ang sa PD-1179, it should be over 9 years old but below 18. Hindi na po 21, below 18. Pero again, may bago po tayong batas. Yung tinatawag na Republic Act 9344. Ito po, posibleng posible po itong lalabas sa board examination. Yung Republic Act 9344 or the Juvenile Justice Welfare Act. So ano, pang, ano po ba ang importanteng provisions ng provision ng Republic Act 9344. Kung ang PD603 will be uh, over 9 but below 21, tsaka yung 1179 is over 9 but below 18. Ang sa 9344 po, ang pagsasabi dyan, ang nakasabi dyan, 15 and below are exempted from criminal liability. While over 15 and below 18 are likewise exempted unless acted with discernment and is called child in conflict with the law. So in the first slide, I already mentioned, hindi na po youthful offender ang tawag dyan. Kasi may RA 9344 naman tayo, ang youthful offender, ang tawag na po sa kanila is CICL or child in conflict with the law. Secondly, hindi na po eh, over 9 but below 18 or over 9 but below 21. Kasi ang bagong provision po na dapat nating masunod is yung dalawang bracket. Dalawang bracket po yan. Una, if you are 15 years old and below, ang nakalagay sa 9344, if you are 15 years old and below, and you committed a crime, you are exempted from criminal liability. Ano ibig sabihin dyan ng exempted from criminal liability? Meaning, you will not be put into imprisonment. Hindi po pwede mapunta ka sa prisohan. Yung pangalawang bracket po, yung over 15. When you say over 15, that, mean, that means 
15 years old and one day. Kasi yung one day is over 15 na eh. So, 15 years old and one day, but below 18. Okay. But below 18, possibly po na hindi ka na exempted sa criminal liability if you acted with discernment. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng discernment? Discernment again is the capacity or the capability of the person to distinguish right and wrong. Pero, pag ang over 15 years old, 15 years old and one day, but below 18, nag-commit ka ng crime, but you acted without discernment. Wala pong discernment. Ang mangyayari po dyan is, you will be exempted. Again, para maintindihan, dalawa lang pong bracket dyan. O na, 15 years old and below, unang bracket. Pangalawa, 15 years old and one day, but below 17. Sa unang bracket po, if you committed a crime, automatically you will be exempted from criminal liability. Sa pangalawang bracket po, 15 years old and one day, but below, uh, but below 18, you committed a crime, dalawa pong mangyayari dyan. Una, if you committed with discernment, pwede po, may criminal liability ka. But if you acted without the discernment, wala po, exempted ka sa criminal liability. Yan po ang pagkaiba sa 9344-1179 tsaka yung PD-603. Now, punta naman tayo sa mga tao that contributed, personalities that contributed in in the history of juvenile delinquency. Una po, si Pope Clement D. XI. Yung si Pope Clement XI po, ah, uh, in Rome po, in 1704, nag-establish po siya na tinatawag nating Hospital of St. Michael's. Ito po ang pinakaunang institution for the treatment of juvenile offenders. Yung mga unruly youth po, yung mga bululyagon in Cebuano, yung mga sutil na mga kabataan, na mga minors, will have to be put, would have to be put in the Hospital of St. Michael's for the treatment. Okay? Si Robert Young naman, in the year 1788, nag-establish din po siya ng pinakaunang private and a separate institution for youthful offenders in England po ito nangyayari. So, in this uh, institution, yung mga uh, youthful offenders, okay? Yung mga convicted uh, minors and uh, even those infant poor as engaged in a vagrant and criminal course of life, inilagay po sa kanyang institution. Meron din tayong uh, other personalities like Albert Cohen. Okay? Si Albert Cohen po ay ang tao behind the, uh, the delinquent subculture. He tend to find out the process or the causes or the beginning of the delinquent subculture. Tsaka may tinatawag tayong Kingwood Reformatory. Okay? Ang Kingwood Reformatory was established for confinement of the hordes of the unruly. Ibig sabihin ng unruly, yung mga sotil na mga bata. Okay? Sotil or bululyagon in Cebuano who infested the streets of new industrial towns of England. Also, we have New York Committee on Pooperism. Ang ibig sabihin po ng pooperism po, when you say pooper, yung mga bigger. Okay, yung dalawang terms na yan, pareho lang po yan, bigger or pooper. So, when you say pooperism, that is the process or the state of asking, arms, okay, bigging in public. So, ang New York Committee on Pooperism, which, which was established in 1818, the committee gave the term juvenile delinquency. It's first recognition by referring it as a major cause of pooperism. Take note ha, ang nagbigay po ng uh, term na juvenile delinquency was New York Committee on Pooperism. And juvenile delinquency was considered by them as one of the causes of begging okay, or pooperism. Now, in 1899, the first juvenile or family court was established in Cook County, Illinois. And in 1899 to 1967, this has been referred to as the era of socialized juvenile justice. Take note po, 1899 to 1967. 
Ang tawag po nito, era of socialized juvenile justice. Now, let's go to the houses of correction. Okay? House of corrections for juvenile delinquent. Una po, may tinatawag tayong bride wells. Okay? Ang pinakauna pong uh, correction institution. Okay? Pinakaunang correction institution na nag-house. Nag-house po or nag-confine po both the children and the adults. So, isinama po sa, sila sa isang institution yung bride wells. May tinatawag din po tayong hospice of, Sa of, of, Sa of Saint Michael. Okay? Hospice of Saint Michael, which was established in 1704. Okay? John Howard, a reformer, brought to England from Rome a model of the first institution for treating juvenile offenders. He was often thought of as the father of prison reform. Actually, sa correction subject po, itong si John Howard is lu parating lumalabas. Kasi si John Howard po sa correction subject, tinatawag po siya sa tinatawag po siyang father of prison reform. Kasi ang dami niya pong contribution para sa rehabilitation of offenders pati na yung juvenile offenders. So again, John Howard, the father of prison reform. Then, meron po tayong tinatawag na House of Refuge which was situated in New York in 1825. Ang House of Refuge po, it also confined juvenile delinquents. Okay? Who were defined in its charter as youth convicted of criminal offenses or found in vagrancy. Ang vagrancy po, pag... Uh, Uh, nag-search tayo sa dictionary ibig sabihin ng vagrancy yung yung persons living in public okay in open area okay so uh, for example yung mga yung mga kapatiran natin na na palaging palaboy-laboy sa daan they will be considered as vagrants pero take note cadets ha uh, sa mga nagre-review take note po yung vagrancy po natin is already decriminalized The anti-vagrancy law. Uh, sa revised penal code po, sa nakaraan, ang vagrancy po, isa po siyang krimin. Pag palaboy-laboy ka sa daan, you can be arrested and you will be, you can be, you will be facing vagrancy as your crime. Pero again, na-decriminalize na po yan. Ang vagrancy po natin, hindi na po krimin sa Pilipinas. Now, sa 2012 Criminology Licensure Examination, may lumabas po yung Henry Winship. Okay? Yung Henry Winship po sa 2012 Board Examination. Ang term po na Winship is actually taken from the family name of Samuel Winship. Si Samuel Winship po, isa po siya juvenile. Ang nangyari po kasi, he committed, uh, he committed theft. Okay? He committed theft. So, according to the ruling in In the case, in rewinship, basahin po natin, it, it established proof beyond, reasonable, beyond a reasonable doubt as the standard for juvenile adjudication proceedings, eliminating lesser standards such as preponderance of the evidence, clear and convincing proof and reasonable proof. They established that jury trial is not required part of the due process in the adjudication of the youth as a delinquent by a juvenile court. So ano pa ibig sabihin? Ano pa ang nangyari sa Henry Winship? Ang sa Henry Winship po, dito po na-establish ang principle on reasonable, beyond reasonable doubt versus preponderance of evidence. Kung mag-study po tayo sa criminal law, sa criminal law po, ibig sabihin ng preponderance of evidence, ibig sabihin nito superiority in weight or strength. The superiority, the burden, the superiority or the weight of the particular evidence. Now, ang sa entry winship, instead of prioritizing the weight or the preponderance of evidence, kailanganin po that the court will have to prioritize in establishing the proof beyond reasonable doubt. 
Okay? The proof beyond reasonable doubt in every adjudication proceeding involving a juvenile delinquent. So it's not it would not be a matter of preponderance anymore, but it would matter on proving beyond reasonable doubt. Yan po ang principle na established sa Henry Winship. Pangalawa, yung Breed versus Jones. Now, in Breed versus Jones, it recognized that a juvenile cannot be adjudicated in the juvenile court and then tried for the same offense in the adult criminal court. May tawag, may tawag po tayong double jeopardy. If you were able to watch uh, human rights education, when we say double jeopardy, ang nangyayari po dyan, isang krimen, dalawa yung punishment. Na, na, nabigyan ka ng punishment sa juvenile court, then dapat, yung punishment na yan, should only be the singular punishment. The single punishment that you should receive. Hindi po pwedeng pagkatapos sa juvenile court, punta ka naman ng criminal court, adult criminal court for another trial. So, hindi po pwede. So, according to the Breed, Breed versus Jones, once you are given punishment in a juvenile court, no more trial in the adult criminal court. Next, yung Kent versus United States. Ang Kent versus United States naman provided the procedural requirements for a waiver to criminal court as articulated by the U.S. Supreme Court. So, ito po ang 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 nangyari sa Kent versus the United States. Aside from that, may ang sa pangapat ang tinatawag nating Henry Gold in 1967. Sa Henry Gold in 1967, the court held that juvenile court must provide the basic procedural protection that the Bill of Rights guaranteed to adults including timely advance notice of the charges, the right to either retain or appointed counsel, confrontation and cross-examination or adverse witnesses, self-incrimination and the right to remain silent. So ano bang ibig sabihin sa Henry Gold? Ang sa Henry Gold, ibig sabihin dyan, Yung Bill of Rights, yung Ari of Rights granted to the adult will, should be the same rights that should be granted to juvenile delinquents. So if the, ju if the adults have the right to remain silent, the juvenile delinquent should have the right to remain silent. If the adult has the right to be informed of the cause of the accusation, the same right should be endowed to, to the juvenile delinquent. Now, sa 1977 naman, yung American Bar Association po, they recommended for the decriminalization of the status offense. Ang ibig sabihin po again ng status offenses, these are offenses that shall be considered as a crime if committed by minors, but are not considered as crime if committed by adults. Naging krimen po siya pag committed ng mga bata. Pero pag ang mga adults ang nag-commit sa the same act, hindi po siya matawag na krimen. For example, violation of the curfew hours. So, violation of curfew hours, pag ang minors po nag-violate, pwede mabigyan ng punishment. Pero pag curfew hours, saka ang adult is still wandering in the city, wala pong punishment. Yan kasi adult na. Okay? Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng status offenses. So, yung American Bar Association, they, they recommended na i-decriminalize yan. Now, lastly po, ang tinatawag nating Shal vs. Martin in 1984. Now, isa po itong kaso na nagsasabi na ang Supreme Court has the right to place the juvenile offenders into preventive detention. Ang rason po nila, dapat the, dapat the juvenile delinquent should be placed in, in detention or preventive detention in order to protect the society. Okay? So, yun po ang mga kaso, mga cases that uh, contributed in juvenile delinquency. Now, apat lang po ang types of delinquent youth. Yung una, yung asocial, pangalawa, neurotic, pangatlo is asocial, tsaka yung last would be accidental. Ang pinagkaiba po ng social tsaka yung neurotic, yung social would refer to 
a particular minor who is displaying aggression or aggressive behavior to the point that they will resent the authority. Okay? Ano ba ibig sabihin ng resent? Yung the feeling of annoyance, you will not follow the rules established by these authorities. Aggression is part of their character. Yan po ang social delinquent youth. Yung neurotic naman is different because when you say neurosis po, sa human behavior na subject, ang neurosis po, ibig sabihin, having the unstable state of emotion. So, ang neurotic, the delinquent youth, yung na-internalize nila yung mga conflicts and they preoccupied it with their own feelings. Yan po ang pinagkaiba ng social tsaka yung neurotic. Yung asocial naman, yung asocial naman would refer to those individuals who are called brutal with brutal quality for which the youth feels no humor. Yung walang mga sense of humor. Yung, yung masyadong seryoso. Yung mga introvert. I'm not saying that all introverts are delinquent. I'm saying is introversion is one of the personalities or character of an asocial delinquent youth. Ano ba yung introvert? Introvert yung parating nasa bahay lang. Ayaw nilang, they do not want to socialize. Okay? They do not want to socialize. Yung social na type, they socialize. But as social, they do not want to socialize. They have this cold, this brutal uh, uh, type of uh, behavior. Having no sense of humor. Yung accidental is not necessarily a delinquent. Hindi po siya. He's not displaying delinquent behavior. The only thing is that he is put in a situation, a wrong place, at a wrong time, which pushed him to become a delinquent. For example, na-corner ka and, and all of your barkadas are, are forcing you to drink um, liquor or to sniff marijuana. And you do not even have this character to become a drug addict or, or a person with, 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 with this kind of vices. But since you have been cornered, you have been forced you engage on the same act. And that is what we call as accidental delinquent youth. You are not necessarily a delinquent, but then again, the circumstances and the situation calls you to become one. Now, yung delinquency naman, may tinatawag po yung stages. Okay? May mga stages po ng delinquency. Now, ang mga stages po na to ng delinquency are arranged according to the occurrences of crimes and infractions in a particular age bracket. Okay? Meaning, it is arranged, it is chronologically ordered according to age bracket. Yung pinaka, lima po ito. Yung pinakauna is yung tinatawag nating emergence. Sa emergence po, yung bata will begin on committing petty larceny from 8 and sometimes uh, the 12th year. Ano ba yung pity larceny? Yung pity theft po. Siguro sa inyo mga cadets, naka-experience kayo ng uh, uh, pag ang mga magulang ju is, is naglagay ng coins sa cabinet nila, tapos without permission, kinukuha nyo. That is an example of pity larceny. Yung kumukuha ka, yung committed uh, theft, but in small amount. Di ba? And this is Actually, part of childhood, when you get something without permission of the others, like you get, you stole money from your parents. It usually happens 8 years old, sometimes 12 years old. Now, yung pangalawang stage po, yung tinatawag natin exploration. From pity theft, from getting or from stealing money from your parents' pocket. Okay? Mangyayari po dyan, matransition po yan sa tinatawag nating exploration between 12 to 14. As sa 12 to 14, when you say exploration, meaning you go there and make an adventure within yourself, you explore more from pity theft into vandalism and shoplifting. Ang shoplifting po, ibig sabihin dyan, kumuha ka ng item sa store, hindi mo binayaran. Okay? Exploration. Pangatlo, after exploration po, from age 13 and up, there is a substantial increase in variety of seriousness 
Una ang kinukuha mo is only 20 pesos. Pero ang nangyari sa explosion naging 1,000 na. And you are not yet satisfied, you, you stole 5,000. So parating lumalaki yung, yung quantity. Okay? Quantity ng amount na kinuha mo in as far as stealing is concerned. After explosion, may tinatawag po tayo yung pang-apat is conflagration. So ano ba ang nangyari sa conflagration? From from 15 years old and above, four or more types of, of crimes are added. So from petty larceny into vandalism and shoplifting, you might be including... Um, you might be entertaining the idea of joining gangs and bad fraternities or you will be joining syndicates na or you will be joining groups who will uh, who are also consisting of delinquents naging naging involved ka na sa alarms and scandals pwede po yan and just fixation naging involved ka na din now mangyari po dyan sa conflagration you add more crimes to the previous crimes which you originally committed. Now, ang pinakalas po, ang tinatawag nating outburst, yan po ang pinakalas stage. Those who continue on adulthood will progress into more sophisticated or more violent forms of criminal behavior. Yan po ang mangyari sa outburst. So, sa, sa minor years, Maybe you are just stealing 20 pesos or 1,000 pesos. And maybe you committed uh, vandalism or shoplifting. Pag nadala mo yan na attitude na yan into adulthood, there might be a possibility that the crime would be severe. So ano mangyari? Instead of petty larceny or vandalism, you now committed the robbery. You now committed the uh, theft of more larger or more serious amount. You might be into drug syndicate. You might be into selling illicit drugs. So, yan po ang mangyayari sa last stage na outburst. Now, punta naman tayo sa classification of delinquency. Kanina, types ng delinquent youth po yon. So, dito, classification of delinquency. Tatlo lang po ito. And socialized aggression, socialized delinquency, tsaka yung last would be over-inhibited. Yung unsocialized aggression, ito po yung mga bata or minors having no parents that they, be, they become um, aggressive because there is nobody whom they can imitate. Kasi yung, yung character po natin at yung personality natin is actually molded at home. And these people do not have uh, uh, parents where they can imitate good behavior. So naging aggressive po. Unsocialized aggression po ang tawag dyan. Yung socialized, delinqu socialized delinquency naman is yung type of delinquency that we get from joining groups in the society. Tulad ng fraternities at yung gangs. By the way, uh, don't make me wrong, kades. Yung mga fraternities po natin ngayon are having good intention po. Makikita ko po na a lot of our fraternities are into civic uh or community activities and that's very good but there are fraternities that whose intention are bad and these groups are those groups that are specified herein not all fraternities are into uh, into bad things where in fact most of the fraternities right now that are established in the society are those groups that are contributing so much more for the betterment of the community. So I have to upload those, frat those kind of fraternities. But those fraternities whose intentions are bad are those fraternities sp uh, specified in socialized delinquency. So if you join gangs, bad fraternities, naging socialized delinquent ka po. Yung pangatlo is over-inhibited. Yung... So, uh, Over-inhibited, ibig sabihin dyan, yung mga minors which are trained to commit activities. For example, there was an instance in 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 Cebu City wherein a minor was been apprehended. He was been arrested. Nung nakaposas, nung nakaposas na po, ang sabi ng minor, 
Do not put me a handcuff. Because I am a minor, I am bringing with me a certificate. And lo and behold, when the police officers take a look on the birth certificate, because he was caught selling drugs, the police officers found out that the person was really 14 years old. With the appearance of somewhat like an adult, but in reality, according to the birth certificate, is he was just 14 years old selling drugs. So, example po yan, over-inhibited. Training minors to become criminals. Now, my different approach po tayo toward delinquency. Tatlo lang po, biogenic, psychogenic, sociogenic approach. Ito po ang mga uh, approaches that could explain why delinquency of course sa biogenic approach po we we'll say bio that means life take note po cadets ang bio po refers to life so ibig sabihin ng biogenic approach this would explain why people become delinquents and the explanation is primarily based on heredity yung biology niya hereditary factor po pag ang magulang are bad influencers. So, ibig sabihin dyan, by heredity, maging bad din yung bata. Pag ang magulang is chismoso tsaka chismosa mga marites sa community natin, you have to expect that your child will also become a marites because you have the same genet uh, uh, genetic endowments. Sa psychogenic naman, approach This refers to psychological explanation. Ibig sabihin dyan, yung mga juvenile delin delinquents po natin, naging delinquent because of personality disorder. There is something wrong with their characters. The manner how they behave. Yung sociogenic approach naman would explain delinquency based on the influences of our society. For example, if the child belongs to a society comprising of drug addicts, may mga gamblers, okay? May mga alcoholics, surrounded yung bahay mo with this kind of persons, yung bata po might be influenced to be into drugs, to be into alcohol, or to be into gambling. Why? Kasi yung setup po ng society natin will have influence over the personality or over the character of the child. Yan po ang sociogenic. Socio means society. Psycho means psychological or personality. Bio means life. Now, there are two factors that can cause a person to become a delinquent. Dalawa po. Una, predisposing factor. Pangalawa yung precipitating factor. Yung predisposing factor po, ito po yung mga inclinations. Ano po yung inclination? Something that will influence you. Okay? Something that will push you. Inclinations or inherited propensities. Yung precipitating factor naman, ito po yung mga situation or circumstance that will provoke you in committing a crime. Now, ano po bang pinagkaiba sa dalawa? Ang predisposing is inherited, precipitating is not. Okay? Ang tanong, ang heredity, sir, would you consider it as predisposing factor or precipitating factor? Ang heredity po is an example of predisposing factor. Ang example po ng precipitating uh, precipitating factor is the influence of the society. Or while you are playing basketball and you were hit by the elbow of your opponent, tapos nagalit ka because you were accidentally hit, ayong sitwasyon na yan is a predispos uh, precipitating factor rather that will push you to become a delinquent. Yan po ang pinagkaiba sa dalawa. Now, aside from that, may tinatawag po tayong individual risk factors. Okay? May mga factors din affecting juvenile delinquency. And these factors can influence the person from committing or in committing uh, juvenile acts or juvenile delinquent acts. Yung una po ang individual risk factors. May nakalagay dyan, include intelligence. Yung intelligence po can be 
uh, one of the factors that can cause a person to commit crime. Bakit po ba? Kasi yung in- intelligence, or if a person with low intelligence are having the low intelligence, ang mangyayari po dyan, according to research, children with low intelligence will do, you know, very poor in their academics in school. And if they do worse in school, this may increase the chances of offending because low educational attainment or low attachment to school and low educational aspirations are all risk factors for offending in themselves. So, karamihan po, pag medyo uh, mabagal yung IQ natin, minsan nag-drop out from school. And that could be a, a factor that can influence the person to do delinquent acts. Pati na yung impulsiveness or inability to delay gratification. Gusto natin, makuha natin kaagad. Okay? Aggression, empathy, and restlessness. Ito po ang mga individual risk factors that can influence the person to become a delinquent. Yung family structure natin, isa din po itong factor that could affect juvenile delinquency. Why? Because the home is referred to as the cradle of human personality. Cradle po ng human personality, dyan po mangyayari ang, ang good behaviors po natin. Pero pag mayroong faulty development of the child, walang parental guidance, walang love, walang relational factor, mayroong parental rejection, the parents do not want you. The parents do not like you as, as, as their child. Broken home. Ang sa broken home po, definition po natin, kahit merong uh, ina or ama, pero ang isa sa kanila is absent because he is working in abroad, that home can still be classified as broken home. Hindi lang yung separated, pati na yung one spouse is working in abroad. Parental abuse or neglect. Some of the children are experiencing sexual abuse from their parents. Pati na yung criminal parents or siblings, yung mga kapatid natin that are into vices, yung mga uh, uh, ama natin that are into gambling. This can, all of these factors can influence you to become a delinquent. Pati na yung environment natin. Kasi yung environment will also be the biggest factor in our personality. If you will associate yourselves with criminal groups and gangs, ang mangyayari po, posibleng maging delinquent ka. Okay? Kasi may influence ka by the personality of these gang members. Alcoholism and drug addiction yung society mo. Napakarami. Talamak yung drug addiction sa inyo. So there might be a possibility that you will become a drug addict. Impulse of fear. Crime-inducing situation, imitated instinct like selfishness, okay? Violence and antisocial wishes. Ito po sa environment na ito, uh, makapush po ito. It, it can push you to become a criminal or, or into, a become, into becoming a delinquent. May kasabihan po tayo, birds with the same feathers flock together. Ano bang ibig sabihin dyan? So, pag nag-associate ka into persons who are bad ones, then basically, there might be a time that will come that you will also become a bad. Pero pag nakamingol, you usually mingle sa mga kabataan who are into studying, time will come that you will also become a studious. Okay? Because the character of the genius or the intelligent individual will influence you to become one. So, yan po ang ang contribution ng environment. Yung school natin, yung school is a an instrument for training young people. It is the principal institution for development of a basic commitment by young people to the goals and values of our society. So, dapat po, the school will have to have active participation against juvenile delinquency. Pati na yung other department or agencies of the government that can also influence, okay? These agencies can also influence delinquency. For example, in political interference of the higher position. This is a form of corruption. You want to be heard. 
And the only for you to be hard is to go to a particular politician, to kiss the ass of that politician. And once you do it, automatically you got hard. That is one of the worst um, systems here in the Philippines. You can only be accepted, especially in government institution, if you kiss the ass of a politician. And that's something that, that is not uh, you know, ideal. An ideal set up in in our community nowadays. Unfair decisions of the court. Only the poor individuals became criminals. Only poor individuals are just put into prison. While the rich individuals tend to escape from the tentacles of punishment. So ano mangyari? Sabihin ng kabataan, sabihin ng youth, that our CGS is unfair. So that can influence them to, you know, to commit, to de- commit delinquent acts in Contest with the decision of these authorities. Police carelessness and unfair treatment. Uh, during checkpoint, only the, the motorcycle becomes the most bullied vehicle in the Philippines. You know, that can also influence, that will, that will actually affect as to the behavior of the young ones. Influence from the media, newspapers, movies, TV, even social media, I tell you, can affect. The, 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 the way children will behave. And all of this could be a factor in juvenile delinquency. Now, according to Cloward and Olin, may tatlo po tayong types of delinquent gangs. Okay? Tatlo po according to Cloward and Olin. Una, yung criminal gang, yung pangalawa, the conflict or the violent gang, tsaka yung patrato, yung retreatist gang. Isa-isayin po natin ito. Yung criminal gang po is a stable organization. Po, ang, ang gang na ito will only exist in a society wherein there is a mixture between conventional and unconventional values. Meaning, yung bad attitudes at yung ba, uh, good attitudes are mixed into one society. Yung illegitimate business taka tsaka yung legitimate business are mixed in one society. Now, ang ang older criminals or ang older gang members are considered in this type of setup as role models wherein they teach youngsters on the craft of 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 crime and they teach youngsters on criminal skills. Ito po ang tinatawag nating criminal gang. Pero, pero yung retreatist gang po, yung retreatist gang is not the same with the first one. Kasi yung retreatist gang is considered to be unsuccessful both in illegitimate and legitimate means. Kaya, tinatawag silang retreatist because they only resorted into sex, into drugs, into alcohol, prostitution. Yan po ang pinagkaiba sa dalawa. Yung conflict naman, tsaka yung violent gang, ang purpose niya is not on business, illegal business, but rather on reputation. Okay? Yung reputation niya, that, that gang or that organization is the most tough one. Okay? So, if you form a gang and you want to have it the most famous in terms of toughness, ang gang na yan shall be classified into a conflict or a violent gang. Now, cadets, napakarami po tayo mga theoria or mga theories sa juvenile delinquency. Napakarami po tayong theories. Pero I will only be highlighting those theories that usually came out in the board examination. Ang mga theories po na ito are very important. Okay? Actually, this also came out in Intro to Crime and in the other new subject which is Theories in Crime Causation. But these theories that I will be specifying now are those theories that will explain delinquency. Bakit may delinquency po tayo? Yung una, yung kay Show Clifford, ah, Clifford Show and Henry McKay, yung tinatawag nating social Disorganization theory. Ano ba yung social disorganization theory? Ang ibig sabihin po niyan, yung disorganized society. Ano ba yung disorganized society? When we say disorganized society, yung society na may high turnover in terms of uh, 
uh, incivility, yung poverty, level of change, fear, deterioration. Ito po yung mga, ito po yung uh, tinatawag nating disorganized society. So if a society is considered as disorganized, there is a possibility that the young individuals living in that area can become or may become delinquents. Now, according to Clifford Shaw and Henry McKay, they also stated that indicators of social disorganization may include, number one, yung high in unemployment rate po. High, high, high unemployment. Pangalawa, mataas po yung school dropouts. Marami pong nag-dropout from school. Tsaka yung large number of single, single parent household. I'm not saying that all those persons or families belonging to single parent household will become criminal. No, I'm not saying that. But according to research, between the two, complete family and single parenthood, the single parenthood has more probability on making the child a delinquent one. So again, ang social disorganization theory po, it states that a disorganized society with high unemployment, school dropout rates, and large number of single parent household with fear, incivility, and poverty and deterioration can influence the child to become to become a delinquent. Pangalawa, which is very famous in the in the criminology world, yung anume theory po by Emily Durkheim. Okay? Ang anume theory po by um, Emily Durkheim states that if there is a breakdown of social orders as results of loss of standards and values that replace social cohesion, ang mangyayari po dyan is delinquency will occur. When we say breakdown of social orders or the loss of standards, ibig po sabihin dyan, as I have stated a while ago, may mga norms po tayo sa society. Ang norms po, ito po yung normal behavior. Again, I have to mention, yung racing Raising your voice against your parents. Hindi po yan normal. Yung truancy, you escape from your class. Hindi po yan normal. Ang normal is you have to stay inside the class and uh, listen to your instructor or listen to your teacher on the discussion. But if you escape, then that is truancy and that is normal. If there is a breakdown or the loss of standard in the society, ang mangyayari po ang tinatawag nating anomie. Okay, wala na pong standard. Ano ba ang standard? For example, in our society, in, our, in the municipality of Shaton, ang standard po namin ganito. If you will go to the beach and you will go swimming and you are a lady, you do not have to strip down your clothes and you do not have to wear bikinis or swimsuits. What you have to do is to maybe wear a, conver a, a, conven a convenient short pants or or maybe wear a dress that, that is not transparent and then you go swimming. That's the standard. Okay. But remember that the standard of the society will vary from one municipality to the other. It would be funny if you will go to Boracay and you wear all your clothing and you go swimming because usually they will wear swimsuits. But in as far as our society is, uh, is concerned, if you will wear swimsuits while you do swimming at the beach, somebody will call your attention. Why? Because you are violating the norms of the society. It is classified or it is defined as far as our society is concerned. It is defined as deviating from the norm. It is considered as bad. So if you will swim there in the municipality of Shaton, uh, you have to you know, wear proper clothing, a t-shirt maybe, and a short pants. Alright? So ang ano may, pag hindi po klaro yung standards natin. There is confusion kung ano ba yung standard. Wala na po yung standard. Ang mangyari is delinquency is uh, delinquency can be committed by minors. When we say when we say nomos, that means law, laws or standards. When we say a or a absence. Okay? So when we say anome refers to the breakdown of the norms. 
Next, yung differential operation theory po is very understandable. According to this theory by Hewitt and Regoli, ang differential operation theory suggests that if a child underwent oppression by adults, especially the parents in the context of family, if children are maltreated inside the family, they will resort, okay? They will resort to delinquency. So, pag maltreated po yung bata sa bahay natin, ang mangyayari po, ang bata na yan may become delinquent. Now, punta naman tayo sa strength theory, okay? By Robert Merton. Si Merton po ang may pakana sa strength theory. Now, let us read what is a strength theory. This theory assumes that children are basically good. Only under pressure do they deviate. Pressure for deviants come from their having internalized society's goals, such as being successful and wanting to achieve them. The inability to achieve those goals was considered a driving factor behind crime. Take note of the last statement. The inability to achieve the goal can be a driving factor for the person to commit crime. Ang society po natin usually label individuals to become successful. We are defined the manner we are successful in life. Now, if a person fails to achieve a particular goal, okay, there's a big possibility that that person will resort to criminality. I will give you a very simple example. Let us say you want to procure a non-professional driver's license. Di ba? You want to get, gusto mo makuha ang non-professional driver's license kasi maraming checkpoint and you don't want to be flagged down. You take the written examination. Yung written examination sa LTO is 40 items for non-proof and you need to garner at least 30 para makapasa. Pag hindi ka nakapasa, nako, you have to come back after one month or two months. But when you take the written examination, ang goal mo is to get the done professional license. Ang means mo is to take the exam. But when you take the exam, by unfortunate event, you failed because you only get 20 out of 40. So you failed. So ano na nangyari sa goal mo? Ah, yung goal mo is hindi mo nakuha because you were not able to garner 30. So in order for you to get the goal, Okay? Ang goal mo is to get the driver's license. In order to get the goal, considering that you fail in the written examination, you resorted to you resorted to bribery. Pumunta ka sa fixer, binigyan mo ng 5,000 para para ma-process yung ano mo, yung application mo for non-professional driver's license. At the end of the day, you get your driver's license. But I tell you, you committed a deviant act in order for you to get your goal. You wanted to be rich in the society. You wanted to be looked as the most handsome guy because you are the rich kid in town. But you do not have the means to be rich because you are just living in a squatter area or you are just a... Uh, your parents is just having a very minimal income per month. So, ano ginawa mo? Your goal is to become wealthy. So, you sell drugs. Okay? You you resorted into illegal business, into gambling, for example, just for you to get the goal. Although you become rich at the end of the day, but then again, that the means that you utilize in getting your goal is considered as deviant or Illegal. Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng strain theory. Pag hindi na-achieve yung goal, sometimes the person will resort to criminality in order to achieve the same goal. Now, punta naman tayo sa tinatawag nating social learning theory by Albert Bandora tsaka yung differential association theory by Edwin Sutherland. Now, you have to put in mind, cadet, na ang dalawang theory po na to are similar with each other. Actually po, ang nangyari po kasi dyan, yung differential association, association theory is actually taken from the principles of, of social learning theory. Ang differential association theory po from, by Sutherland is actually based 
by the principles of social learning. Pero, ang, ang naka-advantage po sa differential association theory is mas specific po, po ang mga explanation niya compared to social learning theory. Now, in the social learning theory po by Albert and Bandora, according to him, ang behavior po is modeled through observation, either directly through intimate contact with others or indirectly through media. Now, ang ibig sabihin dyan is that ang social learning theory, ini-explain niya po na ang delinquency is something that can be acquired through observation. Okay? Something that can be acquired when you observe someone. So, if by observation, like you are observing the media, you are observing what's in, the, what's in Facebook or what's in Twitter, you observe your society is consisting of alcohols and criminals, there's a big possibility that you can be influenced with that's, that kind of behavior that you observe. So, observing the members of the society which are alcoholic, time will come that you will also be influenced to become alcoholic. Now, observation po, you imitate through observation yung social learning theory. Pero yung differential association theory, you learn the behavior not by observation but by, but by direct association with others. This requires that you mingle with others, that you directly associate. For example, if you will go with your barcadas and your barcadas are alcoholics, time will come that you will also become one. If you go along with your barcadas that are drug addicts, time, time will come that you will also become one. If you go along with your barcadas who are true ones, okay, who are into true one say, you will also become one. Time will come. Because you can be influenced by their behavior the moment you associate, okay? The moment you associate with these interpersonal groups. Yan po ang pinagkaiba ng differential association theory by Edwin Sutherland and the social learning theory by Albert Pandora. Another theories that would explain delinquency would be drift theory or tinatawag natin neutralization. Tsaka yung isa, yung labeling. This is very common, cadets, in uh, theories of crime position. Maybe this has been already, this have been mentioned already several times in your classes. Pero review lang po natin, ha? Yung drift theory po, yung, yung neutralization theory, it means that juveniles, yung minors po natin, they can sense na may obligation po sila sa, sa batas natin. That they have these moral obligations with the law. And they are bound to follow the law. Pero, pag mangyari po na wala silang sense, they could not get any affection in following the rules of conduct in the society, I tell you. They will drift. When you say drift po, ang mangyayari po dyan, they will deviate. They will become delinquent kasi they cannot think of any reason or motivating factor to follow the to follow the rules of law. So dapat dapat ang ang juvenile po may connection po may connection po siya sa batas natin. Mas sense po niya, ma-imagine po niya, malagay sa isip niya na may responsibility po siya to take in following the law. Pero pag nawala po yung motivation, nawala po yung sense na yan, ang mangyayari, maging delinquent po ang bata. Pangalawa yung labeling theory. If you say, boy kawatan, even if the child is not a kawatan, even if the child is not a thief, time will come. He will develop the same character as you label him to be. If you label him as bululyagon in Cebuano or sotil, time will come that he will become a sotil kind of individual. If you will if you will label a person as drug addict, even if he is not a drug addict, time will come that he will become a drug addict because he will live in accordance with the label of the society. Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng draft theory at labeling theory. Next, yung social control theory. Okay? Yung social control theory. Very important po ito. Yung social control theory by Travis Hershey, 
illuminates the intrinsic and extrinsic factors that influence a person not to become non-deviant. Ang, ang maganda po dito sa social control theory, it does not actually pinpoint directly the causes of delinquency. But rather, it's, it goes to the opposite. Ang nangyari po, diniscuss niya po kung ano ang mga factors na hindi uh, mag-force sa isang taon na maging delinquent. These are factors that will take away the person from delinquency. May apat po ito, yung attachment, commitment, involvement, and belief. Now, ang attachment po would refer to the bond, the bond that is the level of psychological affection one has for pro-social others and institution. Like for example, a juvenile may express, may example na po ako nilagay dyan, I don't want to hook again into drugs because I don't want my teacher to be disappointed with me. It's a matter of relationship between you and the teacher. So if it, you, you might say maybe, I have to attend on my studies because I do not want that my parents will be disappointed. So, the attachment is between you and your parent or you and your teacher. And you do not want that that relational factor will be broken because of committing a particular delinquent act. Yan po ang tatawag natin attachment. Yung commitment po is yung importansya, yung value ng relationship po na yan sa ibang tao. For example, my girlfriend ka or my boyfriend ka. So sabihin mo, I have to attend on my academic duties kasi baka yung, yung girlfriend ko will have to break up with me if I will fail in the subject. So, you give importance to that relationship. Yung attachment would be your relationship, your relational, your link between you and the other person. Yung commitment would be your devotion, your value, your value to that relationship. Involvement, on the other hand, would refer to the opportunity cost, uh, the opportunity cost associated with how people spend their time. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. If you are doing anything, then by doing anything, that mind will be preoccupied. Okay, once your mind is occupied, you will not think about doing shenanigans. But if you are a lazy, ah, di ba, yung mga kadete natin dyan na napaka-lazy, di ba, lazy in doing anything, if you are not working, your brain will be occupied with shenanigans, with bad ideas. That is why delinquency will occur because you are not busy. But if you are a busy person, I tell you, you will not be preoccupied, preoccupied with the devil's idea. Pang lima, ah, pang apat po yung tinatawag nating belief. Yung belief po would be the degree to which one adheres to the values associated with behaviors that conform to the law. So, in other words, belief simply implies a degree of faith or trust towards the validity of the law. Ibig sabihin yan, just like neutralization or drift theory, you have the sense of moral obligation. You think that this law is made to make you a better person. Do you think na ang batas na to ay nagbibigay ng importansya sa yung karapatan as a child. So, once you sense it, you will not commit delinquent acts because you have faith and trust with the law. Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng social control theory. Now, kung may social control theory, may tinatawag din tayong general theory of crime. Ano ba tong general theory of crime by Gottfried Zorn and Hershey? Ano ba tong uh, general theory of crime ipinagmalaki ng dalawang ito that this is the general theory of crime that will explain delinquent acts ang tawag po nito is yung self-control theory ang self-control theory po o tinatawag na general theory of crime ibig sabihin diyan nangyayari po ang deviance naging criminal po kasi you cannot control yourself you cannot control your impulses for example Mayroong uh, magbigay sa'yo ng uh, one bottle of Imperador and that someone will ask you to drink the whole bottle. And you cannot control yourself. Ah, mangyari dyan, pwede kang maging alcoholic at the end of the day. Why? 
because you cannot control your impulses or your emotion. Yung self-derogation theory naman, introduced by Kaplan, is very important. Ito, lumabas po ito sa board examination, I think, 2013 or 2012. Ang self-derogation theory, ang ibig sabihin niyan, pag ang tao walang self-esteem, ano ba yung self-esteem, sir? When you say self-esteem, this refers to your confidence in your abilities or your uh, trust. in yourself or trust in your abilities. Pag wala pong self-confidence yung tao or self-esteem yung tao, ang mangyayari po, he will resort to delinquent activities that are aimed in restoring self-esteem. Okay? For example, nangyayari po sa mga kadete, pag tinatawag mo sa klase to present something in front of the class, Walang self-esteem, walang self-confidence. But when you take a look on the same person outside the university, that person might engage on some delinquent, you know, vandalism, for example. They will resort on alarms and scandals, like shouting, in order to gain recognition and attention from others. And at that point, they can, you know, they can raise their... self-esteem. So, meaning, getting the self-esteem by means of delinquent acts. Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng self-derogation theory. Now, second to the last, ang tinatawag natin culture deviance theory. Now, usually this happens in a, an area, in a squatter area, in a highly congested area. My culture po tayo. Okay? My culture po tayo. Now, sometimes, if a person is living in a, in a congested area, there is another culture that will sprout from this original culture. For example, naging, naging siga ka. Ang pagiging siga po, ang pagiging street smart, ito po ang mga examples of subcultures that usually occur in, in congested areas. So, Ito po ang explanation kung ano ang culture deviance theory. You tend to go out from what is really the original culture, what is really the unique set of, of values. And usually, the culture created in this area and the original culture will clash with, with each other. Uh, that, will, that will result to deviance or delinquency. Ang rational choice theory naman, ito ang pinakalast po. A rational choice theory from the word rationality. When you say rationality, you tend to weigh in your decisions. You tend to balance. I-balance mo po kung ano ang decision mo. Ang deviance is a result of a highly calculation of risk and awards. Prospective deviance weigh their own chance of gain against the risk of getting caught and therefore decide a course of action, for example. True one seed. Example na lang po natin yung true one seed. Meaning cutting classes po. The, uh, you do not want to attend on your on the classes in school. Because upon weighing, upon balancing po sa isip mo, nakikita mo na mas malaki yung gain mo pag nag-absent ka compared to being present in class. You think, that you will be more happy if you are not attending class because inside the class, it will be a brain drain of your intellect. So, you will not be happy inside the class. You think that happiness could be more achieved if you are outside the classroom. So, you become a truant individual. Next, drinking with uh, being alcoholic. You only think that the only for you to mingle with your barkadas is by drinking and become an alcoholic guy. So you have to weigh in your decision. Ano ba ang ano ba ang makukuha ko dito? What is the gain that I can get out from this act? You think that committing a crime such as theft, okay? Such as theft will give you more gain than being arrested. Okay? will give you more gain than being compared to being arrested. Then you will commit theft. Why? Because the gain exceeds from the risk. Okay? So meaning, rationalization means calculating your decision. And sometimes the gain outweighs the risk. Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng rational choice theory. Cadets, sa lahat po ng review, criminology instructors, enthusiasts, 
i-divide po natin ang discussion sa juvenile delinquency into various episodes. Kasi po, too much of something is bad. Alright? Too much, I believe on the concept that too much of something is bad. Let us rest for a while. I'll be, uh, I'll be um, transferring to the second episode. Yung sa second episode po, continue po natin yung discussion. Ang sa second episode po, it will talk about further topics such as marriage, cha, child rights, tsaka yung Republic Act 9344 and other pertinent laws. So I hope you will bear with me. Kindly go over with the second episode po kasi we need to be very comprehensive in this discussion. We do not want to waste only 20 minutes or 30 minutes kasi dapat exhaustive po dapat ang pag-explain natin para maintindihan, para may magamit kayo in the upcoming criminology board examination. I hope you will bear with me and you will you will also uh, this, uh, review with me in the second and in the succeeding episode. God bless you. Thank you so much and stay safe.